The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Georgie Walker, and I'm the training manager here at Caseway UK. And I'm joined uh, by my colleague, Anthony Launchbury, um, who's a training consultant, and um, Anthony is going to be presenting today's webinar. Today's webinar will be focusing on resolving trial balance um, also focusing on the trial balance and document manager navigation. Um, it's an introductory level webinar, so it's aimed at new new users or users who um, are wanting a refresher. For those experienced users who might be watching this webinar, you may want to um, make the recording available on the knowledge base and pass that details on to um, any of your colleagues who might be new starters at your organisation. Before I hand over to Tony, there are a couple of housekeeping items to run through. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please can you type them into the question section on the GoToWebinar screen rather than using the hand raising feature. Now there will be a Q&A session at the end of the webinar and we will also publish a list of questions and answers along with the recording of the webinar on the Caseware knowledge base. So I'm going to hand over to Tony now to, to run through the presentation. Thanks very much, Georgie. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this Caseware webinar. Um, as Georgie just mentioned there, today's webinar is an introductory session. Uh, we'll be looking at some basic features within the Caseware working papers. Uh, now, although the areas we'll be covering today are at an introductory level, they're all aimed at really helping us improve the efficiencies within our engagements. Um, so from that, I hope you find the, the webinar useful and also interesting. Okay, so uh, moving on then, what we'll first look at is the key areas uh, that we'll be focusing on during the webinar. Um, first off will be quite simply the trial bans and document manager navigation. Uh, again, we touched on this within the uh, trial bans errors uh, webinar not so long ago, but so it's just really going a little bit more in depth here, showing you a few extra errors. Then from there, we're going to look at column setup. Um, we're going to look at this predominantly within the trial balance and document manager areas. Uh, there are other areas that we can look at column setup and adding in uh, different aspects to tables and so on. But today it's just really going to be looking at the trial balance and document manager. Customizing views within Caseware. Um, there, there's a few options here that we can uh, activate to make, make our lives as we regress through the engagements just a little bit easier, uh, just so we can view the information that we need to view uh, and just to tailor it a little bit. So we'll spend a couple minutes so, so just looking at customizing views. Then we'll move on to tags and filters. Now tags and filters are a really useful area within the documents manager for us to really uh, helps us to navigate or highlight information uh, for key users like maybe uh, partners or tax team members or something like that. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go through tags and filters, uh, we'll go through give a worked example so you can really see how they work in a or potentially will work within a live environment. Then, as Georgie mentioned earlier, we're going to be moving on to that question and answer session at the end. Uh, again, just to reiterate, uh, if any questions you guys have got, please put them in the question field within your uh, pane to the right hand side of your screen or within the GoToWebinar app if you're using your tablet. Okay, so as mentioned, the first area what we're going to be looking at will be our trial balance and document manager navigation. So what we've got, as usual, uh, we have got a test file for us to quickly jump into. So I'll go ahead and just open up my caseware file. Okay, so from the caseware file, um, as we can see here, uh, for newer users, if anyone's seen like this key financial data or engagement data or key ratios on the screen, uh, this would indicate that we've already built the accounts. Uh, we've already got trial balance in a file. Uh, it's already been mapped. Okay, so what we'll do from here is we want to have a look at the documents manager. Uh, to access the documents manager, that'll be this button over here, documents, when we hover over it, it will tell you explicitly it is for the documents manager and also the trial balance. Uh, we'll start off actually on the work TV. Okay, so when we first get to the uh, trial balance, we can see here that we've got kind of a default column setup. Uh, this is Caseware's default column setup. Now, there's a lot of information on here. Uh, some bits more useful to make perhaps than others. Um, but what we'll do later on is look at how we can tailor this to, just so we can see the important information to us. Okay. Now, at the bottom of the screen, you can see a scroll bar. Uh, again, pretty handy for getting over to the uh, financial data, as we can see here. And you've got a scroll bar up and down on the far right hand side. 
uh, just to go through and again just search through uh, today's TB is quite a, a small easy to manage trial balance I'd imagine some of the TBs that you use back in the office uh, or work with are a lot more detailed than this one so with, to help you with that really you've got a search function here uh, you can press Control and F on your keyboard uh, and that brings you a little search field up so you can go through and search anywhere or you can search within a particular column if you want to uh, as usual just type in the text that you want so maybe in this case I want to look for stock um, it's not case sensitive but uh, what we will do see there is a gate closing stock any other variations open in stock and then takes us through to the stock so it will flick through all the available stocks there so that's quite a handy tool for us to go through and start navigating now what I want to do here is just get over a little bit a few columns across to our financial data now again for new users really the opening balance column the transactions column and the adjustments column all go to populate this final column here um, the way the TB works is you'll have your total as we'd expect at the bottom of the TB just where my mouse is circling now uh, that's for every column here so for transactions and adjustments as well you can see the adjustments one here we've got a five and a half thousand uh, difference which then obviously we can see reflects into that final column as well so We'll start with the opening balance column. Um, the, the opening balance column is very manually inputted. You can populate it through importing, uh, but you can also populate it by manual input. Again, you can see the total just at the bottom of my screen there now just adding up to 132. Which again, if I put in the figures to balance out, see, that will net it off to zero. And we can see obviously those amounts just feeding across the line into our final column. Now, open balance column, very easy to put information in also very easy to, delete, to to remove that information as well we can highlight it and press delete if you need to get rid of that data quickly now the next column along is our transaction column now this is a little bit different um, it is also available for us to import data into uh, but it is not available for us to manually type in data so I'm tapping away there on my numpad uh, and obviously you can see there's there's nothing else changing on the screen here. so the transactions column will all be populated by other entries over here up on my toolbar okay so to see what data's populating here we could click onto other entries uh, from my side here is just gone straight to period balances this is where my imported information would sit but we can see there we've got a few other tabs now there will be a another upcoming webinar that really focuses on this area uh, looking at other entries looking at customizing tables within here so I'm not going to show you too much in here uh, and for now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close out all of my other entries and back to the TB and we've got our adjustments column which is the next up now the adjustments column um, is obviously where we're going to go through and post all our accounting adjustments they will all be manually entered with into our adjusting entries um, they can also be imported uh, but again there's a webinar that looks at importing trial balances so I'll let you refer back to that so I'm going to go to my adjusting entries here uh, to create a new journal we can select new and I would create a new journal or as we know we could already tell really back in that TV that there's already a journal place so to look at existing journals we just use this drop down here and press the plus button and we'll see all the adjustments uh, that we've posted okay so to amend this or to add detail to it we can just select it you'll see here that my journals set up my types yearly dates for the year end in this case 31st of December 16 um, if you wanted to post prior year journals you could just see just change that 2016 to 2015 and case where we'd see it as a prior journal uh, lots of options on here like reoccurring and reversing but for now what I'm going to do is just to go through and post the other side of that journal um, so I'll just use a drop down here scroll down uh, so I've already got a balance sheet element into it so we go down to the P&L code and there we go plant and machinery depreciation account 8001 so it's just going to go through and select that and then we've got 5500 uh, sitting in there and obviously we can see that it's netted off to zero down the bottom um, what is also quite useful here is we can reference this to documents within our documents manager so we're discussing both elements today so what I'm going to do is just use the, the reference drop down just as navigate down so these are all the documents that you have available within that documents manager uh, and here I can see I've got a fixed asset lead schedule E1 and above it I've got my E tangible fixed assets so what I could do here is just literally left click on there and you see the reference populate through 
Now these references are default reference, we can update those. But what this will do is on our journal lead sheet, just give you a reference uh, and allow us to obviously go back and look at that adjusting journal. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you quickly is I'm gonna jump into the documents manager. And I can already down within this area, uh, within the documents manager if you're within here, Obviously, this is quite a clean file. We haven't got too many of our own Excel documents in there. Um, if you did want to tidy the, the folder structure up a little bit because just make it a little bit more easy to navigate, um, you can go to the, say, the little drop-down arrow here, hold down Shift, left-click. You can see it will tidy all the folders up. But when I expand the folder now, it won't go back to where, how it was. You'll see that all the other folders within that section were also minimized. Um, it works the other way around as well. If I want to expand everything, I can hold down shift, left click on the little downward arrow, and there we go, we can see that's just expanded now so we get everything. So if you want to tidy up, you can use those. Also, control and F within the screen as well, just for you to go through and navigate and search for things. Um, so you could type in trial balance if you want to and take it down there. Uh, but that is just down in section N, so I'll scroll down. Uh, here's my adjusting journal entries, and if I double click there, Perfect, so you can see that reference that populated within the adjusting entry screen. Um, a really good trick for you to get back to this source data, if you are reviewing this file or you're unsure of where the journal is because maybe you're not as familiar with caseware yet, uh, what you can do in a lot of places within these documents and lead schedules is you can right click and you've got the option here to go to source. So if I select that, what I'll do is it will take me straight back to that adjusting journal screen where I can then review the journal, make amendments as necessary, okay? So there's a little bit of adjusting journals. Um, what we'll do from this point is I'm just gonna close these screens, uh, tidy up a little bit, close my adjusting entries, leave the documents manager open. Now, from this section now, what we're gonna be looking at um, is, again, uh, just looking at tidying up the trial bands a little bit more. So jump back onto the trial bands. Now, from here, we just mentioned about the, the column setup uh, layout. What we can also do in here is just to make it a little bit easier to read across the line. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that you, you guys might be working on a lot more detailed trial balances than this. So make it easier for you to navigate through and read across the line. Uh, what you can do is you can go up to tools and you can select options. From options here, you'll have the table appearance. Now, from the table appearance, all you need to do is use a drop down. You get a few different styles, rainbow and say spectrum will put a little bit of color on your trial balance. Um, or you can use something a little bit more subtle, like subtle, and press OK, which will just give you some faint blue lines across the screen. Uh, just make it a little bit easier for you to read across, okay? And that is a user preference. So if I set my machine up as subtle and you set yours up as spectrum, uh, then if, we see, if we're working on the same file, I would see my view and you would see yours, okay? Now, this view also gets replicated within our adjustment entry screen. So you can see again that same style and also within our other entry screen here, okay? So that'll hopefully help you read across the, the, the screen a little easier, especially on those larger jobs. Again, let me just close these, these adjusting journals, Sam. What we're going to do now, um, I think I quick jump back into the PowerPoint. Um, it's not too much here, but what we're going to be looking at is, well, how do we tailor those, those columns a little more, column setup. Now, again, column setup within case where uh, in some places will be a user preference and some places it would be actually a file preference. So if we were within the trial balance, it would be a user preference. If you're looking at the items within your other entries, it'd actually be uh, on file. So what I'm gonna do here is, let's just jump again back into that case where file. And what we'll do first of all is we will work on the documents manager. Because the documents manager, like the trial balance, is a con or it has got columns in there. Now at the moment we've only got a couple of columns. So we've got our document reference and we've got our document description. Um, to change this, to put more detail in, what we could do is we could right click along this header bar here and you have the option for reorder columns. Or what we could do is we could select view and from view what we could do there is again, we will see reorder columns, so where my mouse is circling. Both options will open up the same screen. I've opened this one first just because it's not as busy as the second one. Uh, so we can just see a few less options over here. Um, 
Now, from here, what we do is, unlike the trial balance where we may be taking things away, um, this one we probably want to add a little bit of detail to. So I'm not going to go through and add in lots and lots, but just a couple of bits. So prepare by, uh, what we can do is we can drag that across if we wanted to. Then you could go over and say review by. You can highlight it as well and use the arrows if you'd prefer, rather than dragging and dropping. Uh, again, totally up to yourself. And as soon as I press OK here, you'll see now I've got the, the signature. So it says that I sign this off as prepared by on the 17th of April. As you scroll down, you can see I'm a bit of self-review here, uh, preparing and reviewing documents. So again, this gives you, allows you to build some more useful information. In. Now, jumping back to the trial balance, on this stage here, that maybe it's the opposite way around. Uh, maybe rather than building some detail in, maybe I just want to remove some of the columns here so I can get to this financial data a little bit easier. Now, again, the same option. We can right-click on the header. From right-clicking, we've got the reorder columns. So again, we can left-click to open that up. And you can see here, this screen's just a little bit busier. Uh, we've got a lot more there, as you can tell. A lot more choices. Now, the account number, name, obviously very useful. Uh, the lock here will allow me to lock down individual rows. So maybe if I was a, uh, a senior, I could lock down a row and stop a junior from editing it. Uh, however, it's a working trial band, so I'm, I'm not going to include that in my setup. So I'm just going to highlight it, use the arrow, move that across, um, type and sign debits and credits from where it should fall within the, uh, the statements. Oh, I should know where they are. So I'm going to highlight type. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm just going to click on class. Uh, same kind of function as we were used to within Microsoft that allows us to batch select those. Then we can use the arrow and move them over to the right side. Um, they are at the bottom of the list, just in case you're wondering where they go. Uh, that's where they'll be. And when we reopen, they'll go back into an alphabetical order. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is select OK. And now from that stage here, we can just see that the TV's a little bit more user friendly. When we open it up next time, we're just going to see the account details, the description, um, the, the map number, and then we're going to be straight onto the financial data, uh, which for me would be a lot more useful. Okay. Now, every file now I open up from this point on uh, will have that same look, it will have that same column set up. Um, so again, it's not something you need to adjust file by file, it is a user preference. Okay. Uh, very much like the color scheme that I mentioned earlier. Um, now, as I said earlier, there are a couple of places you can have a column set up, uh, but these to me kind of demonstrate uh, the, the functionality and how to activate it. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll move on to our next section. So our next section then was looking and talking about we're customizing views within our caseware file. Um, so yeah, customizing views, caseware has got a few options to make it a little bit easier for us to go through and see the information within our engagement file, uh, whether that be information on our documents manager or trial balance or maybe a lead schedule that we're viewing. So what we're going to do then is again, we're just going to go back into that file. And there we go, we're back in the Documents Manager. Um, the View tab here, so some of you have probably already had a, a quick flick through and have a look through some of these buttons up top. Now, the what we start off with really, if we start over on the right hand side, um, if you are working just on a single monitor like I am at the moment, uh, these options over on the right hand side are quite handy. Uh, it just allows me to see multiple screens up at the same time. So Cascade will see show a cascade of documents. So again, I can still move these around, same as you would do in, say, Word or Excel. Uh, tile horizontally, again, does exactly what it says. And tile vertically, we'll do the opposite. Okay, just vertically range those for me. Now, when you use these options, what it does is it kind of orders every single tab you've got open within your file. So you can see here, I've got my digital dashboard, which is over on the right side. Next, I've got my work and trial balance, which is in the middle, and then my file, document on the far right is my documents manager, which you can just see here on my left. Um, I mean, that may be a bit too much information. Uh, so what you can do, maybe in this case, I'm just going to close all of those. And that, that leaves the documents manager open, perfect. And maybe in this case, rather than just having two or three, what I could use instead is a docking view. Um, when docking view selected, you can go through and you can actually you see the little symbols up on the screen here. So I can hover my mouse over to this one. So you can see when I touch the top, 
it will then say the document manager will be shown at the top of the screen. If I go to the right over here and hover over this symbol, then it will be displayed on the right and obviously at the bottom and on the left hand side and obviously on our middle. So what you can do here is say, if I want my documents manager on the left hand side, there we go, click on that symbol there and that's where my documents manager will be. Then I can activate my trial balance. And you can see here my trial balance is again not in docking view, so I can click on docking view and at this stage I can drag that across. Now with these here you can see as I adjust it, Caseware automatically adjusts the screen for me so it pulls the working trial balance out or it readjusts it uh, to make it easy for me to view. So the docking view will allow me to see two very useful screens at the same time uh, and work on them simultaneously. Okay. Now, what we can do on here as well, if you were to right click on the document, you'll see that you can select docking view, uh, that will deactivate the docking view, or you can press Alt and F6. There we go. And then Maxio is open, go to documents manager again, Alt F6, I need to right click on this time, and it goes back to full view. Uh, so if you are working, say at home or on a train, wherever you may be, and you don't have your two monitors, is left. Uh, using that docking view can be very handy for you to display your information uh, quite clearly uh, on your screen. Okay. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, other bits that are quite helpful. Um, if I, when I scrolled over to my right earlier on my trial balance, you can see there that it's, it doesn't follow, so it's hard to track what account number I'm looking at. So, unless I've got very good memory, which unfortunately I don't, I have to go through, highlight it, and then go, okay, what am I looking at? And then maybe scroll back every time to see what account number I'm looking at. Now, what you can do is you can put set, you can set fold lines within your trial balance. Um, for example, if I wanted a fold line that would just would start at the map number column, I would put my mouse cursor within the map number column. I'd go to my view tab at the top and just select the select fold line. Once I selected the set fold line. I can then go fold, and as you'll see as I scroll across, uh, very much the same way as we would expect to see within Excel or any kind of database program, that uh, it puts us fold there, and we can obviously scroll across, see what the figures are, but yet still refer back to the account number and account description. Um, if you did make a mistake with the fold line, it's a simple case of going, okay, disconnect the fold, select a new column you want to fold, so this case maybe the transactions one for some reason, and then I can select the set fold line there, reactivate the fold, and you'll see now that transactions is going to stay still, and we'll just fold through the rest of the columns, okay? So I'm going to revert that back quickly, and just select my map number. Okay, so that's the fold lines. Um, now, you've also got this freeze option, uh, which is very useful. Uh, what I'll do is it will allow you to freeze certain elements of automatic documents. So, automatic documents are well, make up your lead schedules within Caseware. So, these little symbols here, the little sprockets, that's an automatic document. Okay. So, when you get quite large automatic documents, so if we open up the trial balance, which isn't huge in this case, but it should be enough that we still need to scroll up and scroll down and again just to make sure we can keep the headers at the top of our page what we've got is the freeze option user drop down at the moment we've got no freeze applied we can select a full header or column header either or if i select column header you can see there as i scroll down again we've got the freeze pane at the top and we can easily see what the figures relate to okay uh, by the way, the same options as I showed you earlier, if you were trying to see what these figures are populating from, so in case the telephone, in this case 26,000, you've got the right click and go to source. This case here, it takes me straight to telephone on my TB. Again, it's a really good tool of bouncing in between your documents manager and navigating between your lead schedules, your trial balance, and also obviously your adjusting entries and other entries. Okay, so that's your freeze pane. Uh, let's just go back into the trial bands quickly and I'll just show you remove the freeze pane just put full header. Uh, the difference here obviously when you select full header is you'll get the RS transport and the year-ended trial bands shown at the top of the screen so instead of just showing the TB you get a little bit more information there. Okay so that side is looking at customizing the views. Uh, what I would say is there's, there's lots of other useful buttons up here again like all notes um, if I was to select all notes, 
Uh, this little icon here is a note. You can hover over and it'll give you the, obviously, the detail. But if you just wanted to see all the notes within your trial balance here, you could just click on all notes and a little pop-up on the screen will show again, just helping you uh, get to that information a little quicker. You have all the notes over on the right side. Again, to close it down, you can just minimize or close it. That is up to you. Okay, so that was our customizing views. What we're going to do now is, let's going to go back to, here we go. So next up is tags and filters. Uh, we should be doing, yep, yeah, good for time on that side. So we'll jump back into our case for file. Again, what we're going to do from this point is we're just going to focus on the Documents Manager. So from the Documents Manager here, uh, we can see we've got, again, um, a little filters bar at the top. Now, this little filters bar is has the same functionality. Here we go. As the filters drop down here from the toolbar. Now, some of you may not have this filter header uh, activated. The, the benefit of the filter header is it doesn't matter what tab I'm on, within my toolbar, I'm always going to have option to see these filters, okay? Um, so if you have only got access to the filters by selecting view on your toolbar, what you can do whilst you're in view is just go to show and activate filter header here, and now add activate this banner. So if I just deactivate it, you see exactly what I mean. Show filter header, and now add that back in. Now, these are really handy um, for going through and seeing kind of what documents have been started, what documents have been completed, um, and so on. Now, the example, if we could look at not completed role one, so who's not, what documents have not been started, um, haven't been maybe signed off as prepared by yet, select that, and it will just show you all the documents within my file, mainly looking here at my tangible fixed assets and my trial balance uh, that haven't been marked as prepared by. Same functionality, here for review by, left click, and then we can go through and we can see the review by. Now, what we can do is we can set up our own filters. Um, as mentioned at the, the open of the webinar, we can set filters up for specific members, uh, say of the tax team or audit partner review or whatever, whatever we, we require. So to do that, we can add our in, our in our own detail using tags. Now, I haven't activated tags here, uh, but I will add a tags column just by right clicking. I'm not going to go to reorder columns this time, I'm just going to use show and you can see tags there's available so I can just left click there. Uh, it's quite handy for just adding in one column that way. And what we can do is go okay scroll down, here's my say a plant and machinery invoice. Might be useful to one of the tax guys who have put the computations together so I'm going to go through here and just click on a plus button and just put in tax review and press enter. Once I do that, uh, this little tag will be on the right hand side. Uh, so once we have these tags set up, what I can do is I can create filters to look for those documents and look for those tags. So from the filter button or the filter header, you can use your drop down and you've got a filter manager. So from this, I'll select it, open it up. From there, here are all the filters. Here's an example one built earlier. And I'm just gonna create a new one and this one will be for my tax review or maybe documents for tax review. Uh, again, the detail you put in is up to yourselves. On this point, you've got the filter expression. Uh, this is a preview. Uh, it's not, you don't populate it here. You select edit to populate. Um, and then you've got a simplified filters or advanced filters. Uh, for the time being, until you get comfortable with case files, I'll stick to the simple filters. Uh, and here we can see we've got things like roles, assigned to, tags, and so on. So here's the one I want to focus on, tags. Use my drop down. Here's my tax review. And once that's populated, I can select OK. Um, it doesn't just have to have one parameter. Uh, obviously, we can add in multiple parameters there. Select OK. Select OK again. You can see again my tax review there within my list. So I can press OK. Um, once I press OK, it automatically puts it to that filter view. But you can see here, just got my plant machinery invoice uh, and my tax review. OK, again, to revert back to the normal view, you can just select none. Okay, all right, so getting up to the end of time there, uh, running a little bit over, apologies for that. What we do is I'm just going to go back back to the slides and pass you over to Georgie just to run through uh, some of the questions that we received. Okay, thank you very much, guys. 
Thank you, Tony. Um, I hope everyone enjo enjoyed that presentation. And um, we've had uh, quite a few questions come in, um, and we'll run through some of those questions, and, and Tony can and take you through the the answers to those questions. What we'll do also, as I mentioned before, is we'll make sure that the, all the questions and answers are published. Uh, on the knowledge base along with the recording of the webinar. So the first question that was come through is, how do I add the journal lead sheet to my caseware file? Okay, yeah, good question. Um, the see with the file that we use today, uh, it's pre-populated. Uh, for anyone who wants to build lead sheets into caseware, if I just go back to the file quickly, what you'd need to do is go through within your accounts. So when you first open up the wizard document, here they'll open up a case view. Uh, again, for new users, it's the second program you get within Caseware. I'm not going to update knowledge libraries today, but obviously I do recommend everyone does update them as and when they see it within the wizard. So I'm going to deselect all here, press OK. Now, when you open the wizard for the first time, you'll be on the start section, and more specifically, you'll be in engagement properties. You'll need to set some of these options up here first. But once you've set these up, uh, you have the option here to select a referencing structure. Uh, I'm using Mercia today, but you've also got others there like PCAS, HATS, Kestrin. Once you're happy with your choice, select the Add button. Once you press the Add button, back in case where case where we build those lead schedules back in for you. Okay, uh, so hopefully that's answered that clearly. Again, we'll put the uh, question and answer within the Q&A document for you. Thanks, Georgie. Are there any other questions? Yes, there are quite a few more questions that have come through. So um, uh, one of the questions that have come through um, is, can you drill down to view postings from within the trial balance view? So can you drill down and, and view any postings there? Sorry for that. Um, yeah, I can get the mute off from my machine now. Um, so yes, very good question. And you can uh, dive into the information within the TV and drill down. Uh, like many of the schedules from Caseware, uh, from here, you have the option within transactions. If I want to see what's making up this figure, uh, then you can double click on that stuff, uh, salaries. What that will do is it will open up a current year periods balances tab. Um, be careful see when you jump through. From here, if we had, say, a transactional uh, movement with, posted within our file, if I then double-clicked into staff salaries, you would then see a summary of all those transactions that made up um, that nominal account from import. So yeah, you can drill down. Uh, the, the, probably the trick within case for until you become familiar, when you're on the lead sheets, uh, just double-click within on the figures. Uh, if, it, if you can drill down by double-clicking on those figures, you'll be able to. Okay, hopefully that's answered that question. Okay, our next question is, is it possible to make created filters available on all of the engagements, so all of the caseware files? Yes, um, if you're going to go through and you're going to set filters up, um, what you can do within the copy components function within caseware is you can copy those filters uh, with to other uh, other engagement files. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole copy components here, but you'd access it from this section. Um, there is a knowledge base article on how to, so just sorry, uh, just here on the screen, so to access this screen what you do is you go to file and you see copy components there. I uh, said so I'm not going to run through it right now because there's a, there's a few steps involved but what we will do is I'll put an article together uh, and make sure that's available within the Q&A document for you guys uh, just for you just to go and have a peruse through. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Okay, so we, we're out of time for this afternoon, unfortunately. Um, if we haven't asked, answered your question um, in, during this live webinar, we'll include that in the Q&A document. Um, so uh, thank you very much for all of those questions that have come through, and we really hope that the webinar ha has been useful. Um,
before you all um, leave, I just wanted to talk through perhaps the other webinars that we've got coming up and scheduled um, for during April and, and May. Um, on the 23rd of April, there's a creating custom audit reports, and that's a more advanced level webinar on the creating uh, creation of custom reports. And then on the 11th of May, we're moving on to lead schedules and the document library in a bit more detail. So we've we've touched on those subjects today, um, but we'll, we'll have a bit more time to, to run through some of those features there. There are going to be other uh, webinars that will be published on the events page at our um, knowledge base um, so keep an eye out for all of those and hopefully you will um, receive email notifications of those as, as we publish them thank you very much um, for your your time today and this afternoon we hope it's been useful and if there are any other uh, webinars that you would like us to present or any other feedback please um, feel free to fill out the questionnaire that will be sent to you after the webinar thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day